when we become a Brahmin, we are knowledgeful, we understand the reason why whatever is going wrong is going wrong. Yes, don't we? We understand the reason for everything. But, you know, it's always who will do it first? Who will take the initiative first? So, you know, when you are, you are, you know, when you are an elder one in the family, then you know that your duty is to give love. And the duty of the younger one is to give regard. Yes, so now the thing is, the younger one doesn't give regard. And you also don't give love. And then there is a friction. And then the younger one also, because you know, everybody is a Brahmin, so I'm just telling you about a mother-in-law and daughter-in-law and they're both Brahmins and the mother-in-law uh, she so the role is the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law but they are both Baba's children so uh, the other day they were they are having a lot of issues these days so I was sitting with them individually and the daughter-in-law said that she doesn't love me. She doesn't have love for me. She, I have never felt that love from her. And the mother-in-law said, I don't receive regard from her. So I feel like she always, um, she always disrespects me in many ways. For example, uh, whenever there is a decision to be made, she will never consult me. She will go to her father-in-law and then she will ask him and she will make me feel like, you know, I'm a nobody and uh, the father-in-law is a dominating person. So she gets everything done through him. And it's not like, most of the decisions I don't agree with. I agree with all the decisions taken. But the thing is, if she asked me, I would also have said the same thing. But she never asked me. She doesn't have that trust that I will allow her to do this or do that. And then she always approaches her father-in-law and the father-in-law sometimes, you know, he will just dismiss me in front of her and he will just, you know, say things which are uh, very derogatory to me. And um, I feel like I'm disrespected. And then uh, when I asked the daughter-in-law, she said, I feel like she doesn't love me. So I don't trust that she will do anything which I would like. I always feel that uh, she takes decisions which, uh, you know, hurt me and which I don't like. So if I want something, she will not take a decision in my favor and that's why I don't go to her. So because both of them are in Gyan and they are, you know, they are good Baba's children. So uh, both of them are good Baba's children. So I asked, so um, I asked the mother-in-law, I said, what do you think you should do in this situation? So she said, you know, I need to love her. I know that she feels unloved and I know that I need to extend that warm, um, you know, that warm gesture towards her. And when I asked the daughter-in-law, she said, I know that I should respect her. I know that I don't respect her enough and I do things this way and I'm fully aware of it. So then I said, then what's the problem? You know that she needs love and you know she needs respect. Then where is the problem? So I, I, you know, I was just thinking and I thought, you know, the problem is who will do it first? <laughs> 
it's always you know with brahmins it's not what to do how to do whether to do you agree with all of those but who will do it first so you know if and i think you know this whole thing about uh being um being the wiser one is about taking the first step and when you take the first step who will do the first who will make the first move who will do it first and if you start you uh, whatever makes sense to you according to shrimat if you take the responsibility of doing that first putting that into execution first then i think you become the bigger one and you claim a higher status but when you do it first also you must understand that uh, it will not be reciprocated all at once because you know this is this is a form of karmic settlement between brahmin souls even if you know you are playing the role of a mother in law or a daughter in law and or a husband and a wife and both are also bks even in those cases uh, you must understand that just because you both are brahmins there is no karmic settlement it's not like that it's about karmic settlement and when there is karmic settlement you have to have patience you have to have virtues you have to be loveful you have to be virtuous but you also have to have a lot of patience because your being virtuous or your being loveful or your being kind may not be reciprocated immediately because you know it's not just the it's not just about one birth it's about the karmic account you have created in 63 births and when we take into account all of that then we must understand that whatever looks like a small issue is actually has has a backward linkage of 63 births and so we must take all of that into our awareness and when you decide to be the first one don't think you know that um okay i did it first now who she must reciprocate or he must reciprocate that's not how it works so you have to be the first one you have to take you have to be very patient you have to give it time and allow that karmic settlement to happen so you know i was just thinking about these things that you know how do you become the bigger one when oh you put into execution what you understand because you know even with brahmin souls we understand everything and uh, but when it comes to deep karmic settlements doing it first is the problem you know so i have seen many bks also say you know didi there is nothing that we don't know <laughs> so we know why there is a problem we know the solution but i don't know somehow i am not getting the strength to do it and uh, this requires you know yoga baba's yoga with baba and uh, if you pay a lot of attention to remembrance of baba then you have that power to do it first and what is the purpose keep the purpose in front of you that i have to settle my karma so this is something that was just on my mind so i decided to share it then there is um today baba's baba's murli is all about fortune and there are three things you know which are very prominent in the murli so one thing is a uh, fortune a uh, second thing is karma so karma is karma fortune is always created through karma yes and the third thing is knowing your fortune so you know we are knowledgeful souls so 
in the world people do a lot so they make effort whatever they can whatever they know whether it is limited or whatever but they make effort everybody makes effort there is nobody who doesn't make effort in the world but they don't know where this effort is going so you know they don't know their fortune so uh, people people work toil sweat they make a lot of effort but they don't know whether they will receive whatever they are toiling for but baba says today that we are swadarshan chakradhari souls and we are the ones who who know what we are going to receive exactly with our effort so no we are those ones who are making effort for a certain future so there is no uncertainty about the effort that we are making so it's not like whether you make effort in sangam yog or don't make effort there is something which can happen arbitrarily no baba says you will receive exactly as much as you make effort according to the law of karma because uh, in this birth baba is teaching us the effort who is teaching us god himself so he is teaching us the exact effort we need to make to become the king of kings and baba says you also know that if you do less you receive a lesser status and you also know what you become when you do what you do so you are making an effort for something which is very very certain in your fortune and baba says that you know sometimes uh, i have heard brahmin souls say uh, i don't know what is in my fortune i would like to know my destiny so you know i would lo- like to know whether i would become a king or a minister ministers there are not so sorry so i would become a king or a wealthy subject or a subject or the king of kings who will i become in satyug so baba says that uh, it's not uncertain so look at your effort and match it with the knowledge that baba is giving you and you will exactly know what you're going to become so if you're making the effort for becoming a king you will become a king it's not like you will make the effort and not become a king it doesn't work like that this is um, th- the best thing about this beautiful time is you are making effort for a future which is very certain and you exactly know what you are doing and what you are going to be because of what you are doing so this is something and today baba says that in the world you know in the world those people study for temporary happiness and become barristers etc in this birth there is no question of anything for their next birth in that too it's not certain whether they will become that or not right so uh, people are studying and they get uh, a degree and they become a barrister for one birth but what about the next again go to school carry your bag and go to school in the next birth but baba says in that also it's not certain that if you study you will become a barrister you may you may not yes so i have seen phd holders and i have seen mbas and engineers from great colleges just sitting at home doing nothing so uh, so you that's not certain if you even if you study even if you do everything in this birth it's not certain in the world 
it is it is a world of temporary happiness and you may or may not receive but baba says you understand that you will definitely go to heaven in future yes because we are not studying in a great college we are studying in the godly college and baba says that when baba comes and teaches then the fortune that is created out of that teaching is 100% certain it's not uncertain fortune so this is something that is very important for us to remember and baba says you will then be called deities you must never forget that you will definitely claim your inheritance of the peacock throne you will definitely be seen by becoming the highest on high god the father is teaching you and so that to enters your intellects so we understand that we are fortunate because our future is certain and of course you're choosing to make the effort you're making so it is only as certain as the effort you make but the most another big thing about which we have to be intoxicated is baba the supreme father the supreme teacher is teaching me and i am studying the most elevated knowledge the highest knowledge and baba says that every fortune is created through karma yes every fortune is created through karma there is no other method to create a fortune and here baba teaches us because he is the supreme teacher he teaches us a karma which is which the world doesn't know and what is that karma so baba says that uh, when you remember baba that's the biggest karma because when you remember baba then you are filled with baba's virtues powers and knowledge and your stage becomes like baba so that is the first karma which we do to build our stage and from that stage when you think when you discern when you decide then your karma is very different and much better from whatever you do in the world yes so you ask anybody on the street you know that do you work better when you are peaceful and loveful and when you remember something spiritual that you read in the morning so they will say yes so what is that that is just remembrance of something spiritual that they read and how would you act how would you behave when you are in remembrance of the ocean of truth of the ocean of peace of the ocean of love of the ocean of purity then every action you perform whether it is the act of thought act of word or physical act every act will be knowledgeful loveful pure powerful and baba says those actions will create a different destiny for you and that is 100% certain and baba says this is why the most important karma that i teach you is remember me and do everything in my remembrance and today baba also underlines being introverted so have you seen that um staying introverted is an effort so as a brahmin have you noticed those times when you become extroverted so when you catch yourself talking more than necessary when you catch yourself thinking more than necessary when you catch yourself just distracting yourself more than necessary 
So that is when your inner uh, anchor is lost and you have like uh, succumbed to the pull of the old world. And Baba says, it requires attention to stay introverted. What is introverted? So the Hindi word for introverted is Antar Mukhi. So Antar Mukhi means you know, you are detached from the muk. So this muk you see has ears, eyes, nose, mouth, everything, skin. And when you are not into the pull of the senses, only then, you know, that switch which allows you to go within is operational. When you are, when you have given into the pull of the senses, then that switch which allows you to go within is dysfunctional. And Baba says this is why make effort to stay introverted, take time out, you know, uh, take moments to just detach from the senses and the body and just come to soul consciousness. And then in remembrance of Baba, make decisions which are based on Srimat and act accordingly. And Baba says, I am teaching you this karma, you know, this karma which is not dictated by vices or which is not dictated by sensual pulls and this karma which is full of Baba's powers and based on Srimat, this is going to create a certain fortune for you. There is no doubt about it. And Baba says that you must also have intoxication always. And intoxication that the highest is teaching me and he is creating the highest fortune for me. And Baba also says something very important today that you know, um, even if people uh, even if people create a fortune for themselves which is based on wealth and happiness. So, suppose there is a person individually who has health, good relationships, wealth, everything at this point of time. But still you cannot call that person fortunate, can you? Because that person that soul is living in Kalyug and Kalyug means everything is perishable. Everything is perishable. So, Baba says that one is having a fortune, second is having an imperishable fortune. So, you know, even if you have a fortune at this moment and even if it consists of everything that one thinks about when they think about happiness and wealth. So there is tan ka sukh, man ka sukh, dhan ka sukh, sambandh ka sukh, yes. So you have all four of them, the happiness of body, mind, wealth and relationships. But still you are living in a world which is very uncertain. And this is why you can never enjoy absolute happiness because you will always have the fear that this might go away. So Baba says that this is why that cannot be considered fortune. But I am teaching you the karma to create a fortune where in that world where for 21 births there will be no uncertainty. And you know Baba today talks about um, natural calamities which are on the way and you see you know the kind of torrential rains that are happening in you know everywhere and uh, Baba is talking about natural calamities today and he is saying that when natural calamities take over then whatever insurance you have done it does not work and however many relationships you have, they, there will be nobody to even, 
you know, uh, cremate the body in a dignified manner. There will be nobody to uh, perform the last rites also. So, in this old world, there is nothing like fortune because it's all very temporary and very perishable. And this is why Baba says that you must understand and Baba today says the most fortunate thing is you are a Swadarshan Chakradhari. And what is a Swadarshan Chakradhari? Swadarshan Chakradhari is somebody who has the knowledge of the cycle. And this knowledge of this cycle makes us aware that this is the diamond age and the golden age is coming. And in the diamond age, I am studying from the supreme teacher and becoming a deity which fits the golden age which is certainly coming. And is there anybody in this whole wide world who is a Swadarshan Chakradhari apart from you? So there is nobody who knows that Baba has come and Baba is teaching us this method of creating a fortune. Nobody knows the skill, nobody knows the art of remembering Baba. Nobody knows who is Baba, nobody knows themselves as the soul and nobody knows how to do karma in remembrance of Baba and settle accounts and create a fortune by following Srimad. So Baba says the biggest fortune is you know that this is the time to create a fortune. And then you know that you know what world is coming and how do you have to prepare for it. And you see that uh, if there is a businessman who knows which business is going to thrive tomorrow, then he can make so much of profit because he will learn the skill for doing the business that's going to thrive tomorrow. So Baba says, I have made you Swadarshan Chakradhari. You know where you are standing, you know where you are going. And this knowledge, if you put it in for use, for your benefit, then you can create a very great fortune. So Baba says, this is the most elevated knowledge that you have. And Baba says, with this knowledge, you not only can create a fortune for yourself, but you can also help others create a fortune. Because you know, nobody else is Swadarshan Chakradhari. So they are all very, uh, so you know, people, what are, the, what are people doing in the world? What will happen tomorrow? I don't know, I don't know. And in the fear of tomorrow, in the worry of tomorrow, they are spoiling their present. But here we are knowledgeful children knowing to the tomorrow and creating a future for ourselves in the present based on the knowledge of tomorrow. And Baba says this is a very big fortune to have. And then today Baba says many things which are very important to understand. So Baba says today that the, there are, Baba talks about how to, Baba says human beings have so much blind faith, eminent people are given so much respect, rishis and munis are considered to be higher than them. Although they don't believe in religion, they would definitely bow down to the sannyasis. They would go to holy men and prostrate themselves in front of them. So Baba says, the father says, my beloved children, I salute to you. Baba says, Chil people don't recognize who is the highest on high. And Baba says, you are the master Trikal Darshi. You are the Swadarshan Chakradhari who has the knowledge and who is receiving the power from Baba himself to become the highest on high. And Baba says, okay, no problem if the world doesn't recognize you, but do you recognize yourself? Or you also see somebody and you think that they are higher than me. 
So, Baba says it is not important whether somebody recognizes your worth and fortune, but do you forget it? That is the question and Baba today says that I my beloved children, I salute you children. You are the peacock feather in the crown on my head. And Baba says that you will become the masters of the world. You are also masters of Brahmand. You are double masters. I am the single master of just Brahmand. No one apart from the father can explain these things. Okay, so this is what Baba is saying and then Baba today says that how do you receive a higher status? So now that we know the art of creating fortune, we also know what fortune to exactly create. And Baba today says those who serve others very well receive such a high status. So, how do you create a high status for yourself? By serving others. And how do you serve others? By serving them spiritually. Yes, being knowledgeful, loveful, powerful, peaceful, joyful, pure in all your interactions. So, you know, whenever you interact with somebody, when you are loveful, they receive love. When you are happy, they receive happiness. When you are knowledgeful, then your interaction makes them, makes that knowledge rub over them also. So, Baba says, when you, when you are knowledgeful, pure, loveful, powerful, blissful, joyful, while you come into interactions, that is how you serve others and there are other methods of serving also through the body, mind and wealth. So, Baba says when you support the yagya with body, mind and wealth, then you serve others and Baba says these are the methods through which you create a high fortune for yourself. And then Baba says, then after her there are those in the second number who follow Baba in doing service. So, just like if you do service you receive a status and if you follow Baba in doing service, Baba did accurate service, yes. So, when you follow Baba in doing service you receive a great status. Baba says you have to become very merciful. Are you merciful and are you, so you know when you see somebody suffering physically or you, so do you understand that you need, you need a lot of discernment and knowledge to be merciful. Merciful is not just a matter of the heart. It is a matter of the heart, but then it is a matter of being knowledgeful also. So, you know that um, if somebody is very body conscious, then they cannot recognize that somebody who is young and looks young can be suffering physically. Yes, you see somebody who is young and in their 20s and 30s and you automatically assume that because they are young by the body, they cannot be suffering physically. This is an assumption you make because you are very body conscious and you choose to ignore all the knowledge in the world that tells you that people are suffering physically, mentally, in every which way, whatever age they are. And you know, when we conduct classes for children, children who are going to school, children are having stress issues, children are having, you know, uh, anxiety and they are depressed. And if you are very body conscious, 
you will say that the father is earning the bread, the mother is taking care of the household. So how is the child stressed? They are not allowed to be stressed <laughs> because they are not doing anything. So when you body conscious, you cannot be cognizant of another person's suffering. You cannot be cognizant of even the suffering physically and mentally. Then how can you be cognizant of spiritual suffering? So if somebody is just, you know, suffering spiritually, then how do you understand that this soul needs to know Baba? And how do you perform that act of mercy if you are body conscious? So Baba says, in order to be merciful, you have to be very soul conscious, very knowledgeful. And have you, have you seen Baba uses these two words together always, knowledgeful, blissful. So because Baba is knowledgeful, Baba is blissful. So when you are always aware, what is spiritual suffering? Spiritual suffering means everybody who is in their last birth and everybody needs to know God even if they don't know they are suffering. <laughs> that is spiritual suffering. Everybody needs to know Baba, everybody needs to know the knowledge and do the needful because you are in your last birth. Even if you don't know that you are in the last birth and even if you are not suffering any which way, you are suffering because you are not what you are supposed to be. So that is spiritual suffering, you know, that you are not, you may, you may be like everybody else and you may be doing well according to everybody else or in comparison with everybody else, but you are not enjoying the happiness that you're supposed to enjoy. So Baba says that, you know, when you are knowledgeful, then you have mercy that even if somebody doesn't understand that they are suffering, you need to bring them to the awareness that, you know, you are a deity soul and where are you? Look at your condition today and then elevate them and, you know, uh, invoke them to make the effort to create a fortune. So it requires a lot of knowledge to be merciful. You cannot be blissful and merciful if you are not knowledgeful. Because suffering is not indicated by somebody saying, Oh, I am suffering, oh, I am suffering. Suffering is a matter of knowledge. Just because somebody is saying, I am suffering or not saying, I am not suff I'm, I'm suffering, doesn't mean that, you know, there is suffering or there is no suffering. Okay. Om Shanti, 